Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, why does somebody with a personality disorder not seem to be aware they have a personality disorder? So to get started with this question, it's first important to understand that some people who have personality disorders do understand that they have a disorder. Others don't seem to have much awareness at all about the personality disorder. But I'd say most people who have personality disorders have kind of both characteristics. They're aware of some of the elements of the personality disorder and they're not aware of others. So to answer this question, I'll be using a few different reasons. I'll be giving a few different reasons and exploring a few different topics around insight and awareness. And toward the end of the video, I'm going to give a narrative that I think really kind of explains pretty well the experience of having a personality disorder and how somebody who doesn't have a personality disorder might be able to relate to somebody who does, specifically around the topics of awareness and insight. So first I'm going to start with a couple terms that I've used before in other videos, egosyntonic and egodystonic. And these terms come from the psychoanalytic school of thought, so they go back many years. And egosyntonic really means that somebody's emotions, behavior, cognitions are consistent with their values, beliefs, and their ideal self-image. So if somebody does not have a personality disorder and they're egosyntonic, this would be considered expected. For lack of a better word, this would be normal. So the way they feel, the way they behave, the way they think is in line with their values. They find it acceptable. They find all those behaviors and emotions and thoughts acceptable. Now, as somebody's egodystonic, this means that their feelings, thoughts, and behaviors are inconsistent or unacceptable as compared to their values and beliefs. So if somebody did not have a personality disorder, we would think of a situation where their egodystonic as being negative, like cognitive dissonance. Right? Like they're doing something, but they're thinking something else. They're doing something against their beliefs. Now, if somebody does have a personality disorder, then egosyntonic is interpreted a little differently. It still means the same thing, but if somebody has a personality disorder and they're egosyntonic, we usually look at this as negative because this is the same thing as not having awareness. Their beliefs and values are inconsistent with their feelings, behaviors, and thoughts. If somebody has a personality disorder and they're egodystonic, we usually think of this as being positive because this means they're aware that their thoughts, feelings, and behaviors could be hurting them and hurting other people. So it kind of flips around. So if somebody, again, doesn't have a personality disorder, now I'm simplifying this a bit, but if they don't have a personality disorder, egosyntonic is good and egodystonic is bad right, so positive or negative. And if they do have a personality disorder, we usually think of egosyntonic as negative, and egodystonic is an indicator that they're recovering, that they're working toward a recovery. Now, when we talk about egosyntonic and egodystonic and lack of awareness, a lot of times we think of the word metacognition. We also see the word mentalize and mind reading, and they all really mean the same thing. So metacognition is when somebody can think about their own thinking. And we know this tends to be impaired often with personality disorders. So we usually think of metacognition as positive, and there's a deficit that we see with personality disorders, and this leads to some of the difficulties that people with personality disorders experience. So if we put these together, egosyntonic, egodystonic, metacognition, and we think about personality disorders, we would say that most people, again, as I mentioned before, have some awareness in some areas, but then a lack of awareness in other areas. And generally, if somebody does not have a personality disorder, so they have a mental disorder that's not a personality disorder, we would think that they would have fairly good metacognition and that they would be egodystonic. So they would not find the symptoms to be in line or acceptable with their values. And if somebody does have a personality disorder, of course, we would typically think they would be more egosyntonic. Now, what's interesting here is that there's exceptions. If we think about a personality disorder like 
avoidant personality disorder. I've treated people with this disorder, and you don't usually think of the word egocentric when you think of presentations of this disorder. But if you move over to obsessive compulsive personality disorder, you would probably say, well, that's typically egocentric. There's also exceptions the other way. So certain mental disorders are characterized by egocentric thinking. For example, eating disorders like anorexia nervosa and schizophrenia both have an egocentric nature. So just because somebody has or doesn't have a particular type of mental disorder, that doesn't necessarily tell us 100% if they're egocentric or egodystonic. Now we see some studies that appear to challenge this general theory of personality disorders, specifically around the area of psychopathy. So psychopathy is not a personality disorder, but it's a set of characteristics that's closely aligned with two different personality disorders, antisocial and narcissistic personality disorders. And we see results in some studies that show that individuals with psychopathy are fairly good, fairly accurate, in determining what personality traits that they have. So they can accurately identify the level of a certain personality trait that they have. Now we think of this in terms of something like the five-factor model. So there's the five-factor model personality, the big five traits. And there's also a five-factor model called the dimensional model used in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. And those five traits are psychoticism, negative affectivity, detachment, antagonism, and disinhibition. So what they find with psychopathy is if somebody has psychopathic traits, they can identify all those traits pretty accurately in themselves, except for psychoticism. But the thing to remember here that's important is just because somebody can describe their own five-factor model or related model doesn't mean they really have insight. Insight's different than that. Insight's also understanding how other people perceive you and what it means to other people that you have certain characteristics. So it's beyond just simply scoring a report correctly a personality inventory correctly. It's also about relationships and your role in society. So I've seen some interesting studies. I'll put a reference to one of these studies about psychopathy in the description for this video. But just because we see these results, again, doesn't mean that psychopathy is associated with a lot of insight. Now, something else to consider with personality disorders is that if an individual has a personality disorder, there is a likelihood that they're going to have one or two or even more other personality disorders and other mental disorders that are not personality disorders. So this means they're going to have a wide range of symptoms. At least we see this much of the time. Symptoms like anxiety, depression, we see a lot of substance use. I think what happens here with insight and personality disorders sometimes is that these distressing symptoms get in the way of self-reflection. So somebody's not able or willing to explore their own personality, to understand it, to understand how it impacts relationships because they're anxious, depressed, because they have intrusive thoughts. There's a lot of other symptoms that get prioritized and really, I think, tend to distract people away from more philosophical pursuits, right? If you're thinking about your own personality, that means you have some time and some clarity. If somebody's distracted by distressing symptoms, they're not going to have a lot of energy and time to invest in that type of self-exploration. Another theory we see around lack of insight personality disorders is that the personality disorders, to one extent or another, are protecting the individual. Now, usually when we use this type of theory, we're talking about narcissistic personality disorder, so there's a fragile sense of self, and that personality trait, narcissism, protects that individual. But I could also see this occurring with other personality disorders, like borderline personality disorder, to some extent avoidant personality disorder, avoiding other people may protect the individual. And even a disorder like paranoid personality disorder, maybe being paranoid, being defensive, makes the person feel safer, like they're always on the lookout for danger, and that means they're not going to get hurt. So it could be that giving up those different characteristics, 
like being aware of those characteristics and then potentially giving them up, maybe that's too distressing, really too distressing to even think about. Another theory to consider with lack of insight and personality disorders is that maybe somebody never learned how to build good relationships. If we think about the nature of personality disorders, a lot of these symptoms are characterized in terms of, they're thought of in terms of relationships. So if somebody never learned how to build good relationships, if they have a negative view of relationships, if they don't see anything positive in having relationships, that could explain why there's not a lot of awareness, why they're not really worried about these symptoms because they're not valuing relationships. So if they did value relationships, that may increase awareness, which is really one of the theories about how to treat personality disorders, to really explore relationships and how they can be improved. Still another way to think about this is maybe the individual with the disorder doesn't really have anything to compare their personality to. Maybe they grew up in an environment where a lot of people had personality disorders or personality disorder features. So they never really learned what normal was, for lack of a better word. They never learned what a normative personality profile looked like, which is really consistent with the idea that some of these behaviors are really learned behaviors. So these are some different technical ways to answer this question. Egocentonic, egodystonic, metacognition, learned behavior, lack of insight. But I mentioned before that I had a narrative that I think may help to understand the perspective of someone who has a personality disorder. So this is kind of like, in a sense, a movie. You have to suspend disbelief and go along with it a little bit to understand the point or to get the experience correct. So this is really based on one of the theories I have about personality disorders, that maybe the lack of awareness is because normal feels wrong. So what we define as normal doesn't feel right to somebody with a personality disorder. They believe it's actually wrong. So let me use this narrative, and I think this, I think this will help to kind of explain what I'm getting at. So say that you and a small group of people, so you and, say, 10 other people, are in a room. And let's just assume that you do not have a personality disorder, and no one in the room has a personality disorder. And through some intervention by aliens, I don't know, for some reason, everyone in the world, except for you and the people that are in the room with you, go from whatever type of personality that they have to having antisocial personality disorder. So a tendency to involve themselves in criminality, to lie, to be impulsive, irresponsible, and to have a lack of remorse. So you might not have, again, any of these traits, and the people in the same room with you might not have any of these traits either. But now you're in a situation, you're in this room, and the whole world has switched over to antisocial personality disorder, and specifically a manifestation that involves endorsing all of the symptom criteria. So now you have an interesting choice. How long would you last in that environment if you didn't adapt, right? If you just stayed with your normative personality traits, how long would you survive in an environment where people didn't have a lot of empathy and they tended to commit crimes and they were manipulating all the time? You probably wouldn't fare too well. So you would try to adjust, you would try to fit in, but it would never quite feel right. You could change some of your behaviors for a while but you couldn't stop being a nice person, a normal person, if, in fact, a normal person is nice. Uh, you couldn't stop that. You couldn't resist that original personality that was pro-social, that liked people, that wanted to build relationships. You would be forced into an environment where you had to adapt, but again, it would feel wrong. So what has become normal would feel wrong to you. So think about this. Now, if you switch this around, this is how many people with personality disorders feel. They feel that their traits make sense and that everyone else is abnormal and that everyone else is asking them to adjust and to become like them, but it feels wrong. 
So with this example, I think it's a little easier to appreciate the struggle that somebody with a personality disorder has in changing personality traits or even in changing behaviors. So we could really say here that this idea of normal feeling wrong, we could call that lack of awareness. We see that as a lack of awareness. But for the person with the personality disorder, it's not a lack of awareness. If somebody believes that their behavior is correct, then it becomes very difficult to change. And I think that this is really what we're looking at when we're looking at personality disorders, at least some of the time, probably even much of the time to some degree. Now for this narrative, I used the example of antisocial personality disorder, but you could just as easily use OCPD, obsessive compulsive personality disorder, paranoid personality disorder, narcissistic personality disorder. With any of these personality disorders, if the whole world developed that personality disorder, and you were one of the few people that didn't, you'd have the same thing that would happen. It would be very hard to adjust to that. So I think this is what's really going on when somebody's in a relationship with somebody with a personality disorder and they become frustrated because that person won't change. They ask for a change, but they don't get a change. Right? That's what happens a lot of the time. And there's frustration. But if you can understand it from the other person's perspective, it kind of makes sense. As a matter of fact, we would be surprised if somebody would change, if changing felt wrong, if changing didn't seem like a smart or rational move or strategy. So with this narrative in mind, this way of understanding personality disorders, what's the answer? Well, I don't know all the answers. I mean, I think that it is difficult to, from a relational standpoint, just ask somebody to change their personality. It seems like it makes sense that that wouldn't be a successful strategy. I think one potential strategy, and of course this isn't always successful, but it's a strategy sometimes used by counselors, is to accept someone's personality the way it is. Essentially validate that their personality occurred because of circumstances and because of genetics and not because they chose to have a certain personality. So really, well, I guess what I'm saying in one sense is, what if people with personalities are just people? What if people with all types of personalities have those personalities and it's completely understandable why they have them? I think sometimes we draw these distinctions like personality disordered and non-personality disordered because we're trying to treat people that have difficulties. But these distinctions can also lead us into our own problematic thinking, right? We think more categorically instead of on a continuum. But everybody's personality is the way it is, and they don't change too much. So if we can understand that and not directly confront that and just say, oh, your personality is bad, you need to change it, and instead accept it to the extent that's possible, I think that's a more rational strategy. Again, not necessarily always a successful strategy. I don't have all the answers to fix personality disorders. But I guess maybe the point is that fixing them maybe shouldn't always be the goal. Maybe accepting them first would be the goal. And then working on building insight. I do think that awareness and insight are really, really keys for recovery from personality disorders. So if that's true, if I'm correct, I think accepting somebody's personality gives them a better chance of developing insight. It lowers defensiveness. It sort of gives them a valid starting point, right? It's validating their feelings. So they might think, okay, I have this personality and people don't react well to it, but these other people seem to understand why I have it. So again, that validation could lead to exploring other behaviors. So maybe now in that safe place, somebody could say, all right, I know that my personality rubs people the wrong way, so I'm going to work on maybe adjusting this part of it or this behavior. Again, just an idea. It's just a thought. Personality disorders are treatment resistant. That's how they're really thought of most of the time. I've had reasonable success treating people with personality disorders, but I do think that judgment, just saying, hey, you need to change this, that's not usually a successful way to go about it. So I know whenever I talk about personality disorders and especially when I talk about recovery, 
there are a lot of different opinions from people that have personality disorders, from people that are in relationships with individuals with personality disorders. So if you have any thoughts on my thoughts, any opinions on this video, please put those in the comments. I'm sure it'll build an interesting discussion. As always, I hope you found this description of insight and personality disorders to be interesting. Thanks for watching.